this is Jim Koppel with The Legacy Project. Adam Gottnick, in his most recent book, A Thousand Small Sanities, has written, Nobody on their deathbed stopped to think about the glory of single-payer health insurance. Even if single-payer health insurance was making their last days better. The realm of affairs in which questions of government, good and bad, can speak to us is extremely limited. Close quote. An important observation. The things that we value, the things that we cherish, the things that we hold important in life, on our deathbed, there won't be a lot of the political issues that are currently being debated in the presidential election that we're facing. I, along with others, including most of you, have been thinking a lot about the presidential election coming up in the next several days. Who do we vote for and why do we vote for them? I'm somewhat amused by the rationale given by many people that, well, gee, I can turn off the sound and pay attention to what President Trump does, and I'm okay. As if what he says and who he is does not matter. What matters is what he does. That same kind of argument was used by the left when it came to Ted Kennedy and Chappaquiddick and that presidential, his quest for the presidency in 1976. Those kinds of issues and that tension between personal morality and public morality has been with us for a long time. In fact, Reinhold Niebuhr wrote an important book in 1932 entitled Moral Man and Immoral Society in Ethics and Politics. Niebuhr was the pastor of a church in Detroit. He went on to become a professor at Union Theological Seminary and had significant influence on one of my favorite thinkers and theologians, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Seems Niebuhr comes up as a topic almost every presidential election, and it's a topic around how do we vote and what kinds of influences should guide us in our decision-making. I have voted in every presidential election since 1972. My first election was the election between George McGovern and Richard Nixon. McGovern got clobbered in that race. Only Massachusetts did he carry in that election. Richard Nixon carried 49 states. Of course, we know what happened to Richard Nixon in the next couple of years. He would be impeached, and he would leave office in a scandal because of his incessant lying and manipulation of power against his political enemies. Something he didn't need to do, but he did anyway. In that time, people also sought to justify either Nixon's actions by, well, it's his moral behavior versus his policies and the things that he achieved or wanted to accomplish. We're probably faced with that same kind of dilemma, is that we want to turn off the sound. We don't want to listen to what the candidate may say. We're more interested in his policies or his approach uh, to government. Well, of the 13 elections that I have voted in for president, of the 12 that I know the outcome, only five of those elections did I vote for the winner. The other seven, I voted for the loser. And I had to live with what, that decision and the consequences of that decision. But it did not fundamentally change the value principles that I brought into that election or that influenced my decision. In fact, I found other ways in which to express those values, those principles, whether it's in service to the community, my service to family, Whatever that might be, there were other more critical values that influenced my outcome. And I urge you, whatever happens on Tuesday, November 3rd, is to approach this election based upon the content of people's character. Because as Niebuhr pointed out, it is ultimately the individual, the moral decision, moral man, who influences policies and decisions. When you leave it up to the collective or the masses, whatever that might be, Republican, Democrat, communist, fascist, whatever extremes you want to uh, embrace, they ultimately don't have as much influence on the way the culture moves or shapes than the individual and the choices that they make. This is Jim Koppel for The Legacy Project.